Well, it looks like we're there. We go. We are live. We have made it. Hello, everybody. We're glad Hi, you're everybody. here. All right, we're gonna get started in just a minute here. Um, so I want to uh, just let us know if you have any questions as we're going through here. We're going to. This is gonna be a kind of a different uh, type of format. A lot of times, Dr. Sherry and I try to give a lot of information. Um, yep. And sometimes we think we're just talking to ourselves, um, but we, we really want you to have that really big understanding of like the, 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 the tools that we're gonna give you. And so that was what last week's webinar was about. Uh, this week, it is all about action, okay? So we, we literally have taken the time uh, to take all the information, uh, we've put everything online there for you. Literally, like you, you don't have to take notes if you don't want to. If, if Dr. Sherry says something brilliant, I would definitely uh, take it, repost it, um, because he does have a lot of brilliant things there. Um, but uh, we've set up a, you know, an hour from now, you'll actually get a landing page, like a, like a link sent to you from a landing page, and it's going to have all the challenge information on there, like exactly what you need to do, what the, the foods that you can eat in those groups there. Um, and, and I think that would be the big, the big yeah. thing for us. So I agree. I mean, one, one thing that when Dr. Osborne and I talked is um, a lot of people say, well, it's great information and we're not getting a lot of people to take the next step. So tonight, really, we, what we really want to do is give some information so you understand the process. But we're really going to dive in a lot of like in the challenge. How do you actually accomplish the challenge? How do you get over some of the challenges? Some of these dietary things have a lot to do with addictions and habits and things that people can't break. So hopefully tonight we're going to be able to give you some of those tools and some ideas. I think, you know, the education empowers you. If you kind of have an idea of how this thing works and how to get over those challenges, uh, that's going to make your success a lot higher. So that's really our goal tonight is to try to get you in the action steps of this process. What's great is, that, you know, as I'm looking at the people that are online right now, so we have Mary Shea, who's, you know, I think I started adjusting her when she's three years old. She's up in, um, you know, San Francisco. We have other, you know, other people in their 90s on here. So the great news about all this information is it's not just for people that want to lose weight. It's actually, the, we talked about this on the last webinar that remember, like when we're, weight is a symptom of not being healthy so our goal is to make you healthy here so we're gonna we, we figured out that what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this down into a whole bunch of threes and fives like know these three things master these five things and we'll kind of build from there okay dr Sherry? sounds good to me all right so you guys ready to give us a thumbs up if you're ready to uh get started here so i think the if you want to get started I yep i can jump in so th we talked about the motivation to lose weight and i'm you know unfortunately i think what happens a lot of people go i got motivation i got motivation um, and then they, they, they lose track of where they're going uh, because motivation lasts only as long as you can keep putting energy into it. So I came up with three motivational tips that I think that I've learned over the years that really seem to work. And one of them is I talked to a patient one time who was in her mid to late 70s and she had lost about 80 pounds once. And I said, you know, just out of curiosity, what, what made you lose the weight? How did you do it? And she said, I wanted to feel what it was like to be thin just once in my life. And that was the fact that hung on. So that's one of the things I want you to think of. If this is a weight loss thing that you've been struggling with for a long time, um, and again, when we talk weight loss, we're going to talk health also. It's the same idea here. Um, one of the goals can be, I just want to do this. I want to get thin at least once. The other one was, uh, is health versus quality. One thing that we'll have is a lot of people want to be healthy. And, and I've talked to a lot of people, I want to be healthy and healthy, but they don't know exactly what it is and what that means to have quality of life near the end. Um, one of the things I, I want to impress upon you is this. I've had people say, well, I don't really care. I'm going to eat what I want to eat. I'm going to live how I live. And if I have a heart attack, so goes it. I had a guy tell me that about two months ago. And I thought, yeah, I get it if that's how he wants to go. And I literally that next night woke up and realized that he was absolutely wrong because it dawned on me that he was basically basing that information on the fact that he would just get unhealthy and have a heart attack and die and be gone. And I thought that's not how it happens. So I brought him in the next time I saw him. I said, you know what? The odds of you just having a massive heart attack and dying isn't as strong as you having a minor heart attack and living months and years in a hospital suffering and your family having to deal with it. And he said, I never thought of it that way. So there's a bigger thing than just dying here. I want you guys to be motivated. This is about quality of life and living a long, healthy life while we're here. So I want you to think there's a big picture here, not only for you, but for your friends and your family. Well, and I think that uh, Dr. Sherry hit the nail on the head real quick. And I just, I think we, we talked about it's the the motivation and I call it the big why. So I think that somebody says, well, I'm going to get sick. And that's, that is actually the most selfish thing um, that somebody could say. Because if you've ever taken care of somebody before, um, you know, 
the people that are sick, they don't do anything. It's all the people that are around them, all the other people that have to sacrifice and suffer. And so I, one of the things that for me, it's a bit, it's about a big why. Why do we want to lose weight? Because if we don't know that why, when the times get hard, we never will. And so um, last, the, yesterday was uh, 19 years ago. So I don't know if you guys can see this. This is, was my big why. So 19 years ago, uh, my dad died on this day, on uh, uh, yesterday. Um, I was 285 pounds. And I looked at my, my young son who was not even born. So my wife was pregnant at the time. And I looked at my young daughter and I realized that I didn't want to do that to my children. See, my dad tried to do all the work at the end of his life rather than throughout his whole life. And he's missed out on the last 19 years. So look, we got to find out our why. We got to focus on the process. We got to pick a plan that fits your lifestyle. That's what this is about. We got to keep our, um, you know, we got to celebrate our successes, not beat ourselves up. And we're going to find that social support. And that's what tonight's about. Um, you know, it, uh, on this network there. Make sure at the end of the time, we're gonna, one of the things we're gonna tell you to do is to, to join the Discover Tribe. You'll get that link on the, uh, um, uh, on, on the email that's coming out there. So just make a, a bit, the big thing's about making a commitment. So, but I do think that, that it really comes down to the discipline. A lot of times people say, I've tried this and I've tried that, and I just am not a disciplined person. And so what I have found really is, is that, that, that Discipline is not something that you have. It's something that you create. You create it through your habits. You um, and and what what I find is is that the biggest key to success for discipline is preparation. So if you just kind of go into the week saying, "Hey, I'm going to follow this plan," and you wake up Monday morning, you're like, "Okay, what am I supposed to do?" No matter how disciplined you are, by the time you get to work, if you haven't eaten anything, you're going to be hungry. And by the time you get home, if you haven't prepared anything, you're just going to go back into your old habits because your old habits are stronger. So you have to discipline ourselves through preparedness to develop the habits to be able to create a new routine so we can create a new you. Yeah, I, I you know, it's interesting. After 25 years of being in practice, I think this is probably the most important thing right here. And I think this is why this webinar has come along is because we start realizing we can give you all the information in the world. But if you can't follow through, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Uh, I heard one of the most successful Olympians in the water polo in the United States said the other day, he's been to four Olympics and he's getting ready to retire. And he said, I decided when I was 15, I was going to be the Olympics and I was going to do whatever it took to get there. And after four Olympics, he has this huge Olympic career and he's talking about just how he didn't give up. And that's the discipline you have to have when you sit down with these. There's a, a Dr. Osborne I'm talking about long ago. And one thing I used to do with a lot of patients, I was put them on a very specific diet for five days. We're not doing that this time, but I would put them on a diet for five days where they only ate raw. And the idea that I had was I was actually more just figuring out what their discipline was. And you'll get the person who comes back after the first day and they said, I couldn't do it. And they think, well, that's the discipline problem. I mean, if you can't even do it for five days. So the discipline here really has to be understood about addictions, how you get your brain addicted to the process, and how you get over the, the pitfalls of when your brain sets traps for you. So we're going to talk a little about that today because that's the number one thing. I'm gonna get, we're going to give you some information, but the bottom line is you have to be motivated, you're going to have to be disciplined, and you're going to have to keep it going, and that's a tough one. Creating habits is really what this is going to be about tonight. Yeah, and before we move on, I think that you, you just said it, like just if you were to try to go on like a raw diet for five days, there's an old military saying that says that there's no battle plan that ever survives first contact with the enemy, right? So if you've never done it, you're, you're, you're going to run into stuff, that's okay. But that, that you you learned what breaks you down. You write down the obstacles that you confront during the week there, and you learn the solutions there. So you know you go into a restaurant and they don't have anything to eat in there that you would normally eat. Like you go to Chick Fil A or something. Well, the, of course they're not going to have anything. So then you write, oh, the obstacle is Chick Fil A has nothing to eat there. Well, just don't go to Chick Fil A, right? Yeah. Um, so we this will be um, like a strategy session. So I think the first thing that we want to really look at is this. Um, there's really you know, a lot of times you, you read these books and they have all this stuff that you need to do. And really what we're going to talk about is what I call the three basic rules. You know, most people in my experience have tried to change everything once and, and then you try to change everything at once and it all falls apart. So we're going to really focus on the three basic rules uh, because what happens is we change everything and we get this burst of motivation and then we get overwhelmed and then we quit and we go back to doing what we're doing there. So let's, are you ready for the three basic rules? I am totally ready. Are you guys ready for the three basic rules? Okay, good. Are you sure? I can't hear you. Okay, here we go. So here's the first basic rule. You ready for this one? It's the most simple rule that's out there. And if you just follow this one, if, if God did not create the food, don't eat it, right? Like if man created the food, don't eat it. 
Uh, I mean, so what that means is if you can't read what it says on the label, don't eat it. So th that's one of the, the easiest things that we can do in looking at this is that, you know, like most of the most of the time when we find this is that the foods that are the worst for us are not the things that were actually found on the planet. So if you just follow this one rule, it's going to it's going to be one of the biggest things that will ensure your success. Because a lot of times people are like, hey, what should I eat? And I'm like, well, um, you want to eat this cell phone? I do not. No, God didn't create that, so don't eat it, right? How about uh, these car keys? You want to eat that? No, that's not a hard one either. Not do it. No, okay. Uh, you know, so that's like you just have to look at it from that perspective there. Yeah. But the biggest problem is, is that most of the stuff is you know it's filled with highly processed oils and fats and hydrogenated oils there. So, so one, of, one of the most interesting things that I learned in a seminar on nutrition one time is this guy brought up the premise of living versus dead food. And when he said it, I, I didn't understand what he was talking about. As he went through it, it made a ton of sense. And let me give an example of a study that I read years ago. They took college students and put them in front of a movie and they gave them all a bag of M&Ms. And what they found is across the board, every college student would eat the entire bag of M&Ms. So the researchers thought, well, that was interesting. So they got them a bigger bag of M&Ms, another group of students, and they found out they ate that whole bag as well. They eventually gave them gigantic bowls of M&Ms. And interestingly enough, what they found was students will sit and watch a movie and just mindlessly eat M&Ms. One of the researchers thought, well, that's interesting. I wonder if that's true with other foods. So they did it with celery. They did it with apples. They did it with grapes. And what they found is they won't keep eating that food. And that's what he was talking about. Living food, if you sit down and try to eat apples nonstop, you just can't do it because you get full. Food that has been made by man, M&Ms and candies and things like that, our body almost, it's almost like our body doesn't register it and you just keep eating mindlessly. So that's kind of the idea. I want you eating man-made or not eating man-made food, but more like living food, things that you can actually plant in the ground that would regrow, have a tremendous health effect for us and a big change on how you perceive it as it grows in your body. Yeah, because our food, and by the way, guys, I just shared a copy of the entire PowerPoint presentation with you, okay? So if you wanna find uh, uh, like what the notes on there, don't worry, we're trying to make all this information available for you. But the big thing is, is like, you know, uh, the, most of the, the foods that man makes, they have chemicals in there. Yep. Uh, those chemicals are designed to excite your brain and to stimulate your brain and to create a, cra to create a craving for you. So if you wanna win, you got to follow the first of the three rules, which is, you know, if God didn't create the food, don't eat it. If you can't read it, don't eat it. Okay. So the next, the next one, this is actually a really, this is actually a great one. Um, and, uh, you know, really is, is this, is this, the food has been altered. So like you can take a potato and you turn it into a potato chip, right? Like there's a big difference. If, if it, the food's been altered or modified, don't eat it. Like if, if, if humans changed it, exchange it with something back to it as more natural form there. Um, you know, a lot of times we think that we can always do better, right? We have these great ideas. Um, and once we start to like modify and change things and, you know, we had the big day was like an antibiotics. We're like, hey, bacteria are bad. Let's give everybody antibiotics. And now we have these antibiotics that actually eat people, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and they actually said that, you know, I was reading something that they're estimating like something like 10 million people a year will die um like in the united states alone there i mean in, in the world just from superbugs in the next 10 years and it was just an idea but we don't understand the consequences of our actions we have, we have great ideas but we don't have long term so really i think the main thing is is that uh, uh i know you want to talk about gmo stuff yeah i mean one thing there's a, there's a lot of talk about gmos and you know I've, I've read a lot of people argue back and forth and gmos are genetically modified foods with a plane with the, the DNA and, the, and processing of them. And, you know, one of the things that caught my attention was um, what Monsanto did with Roundup. And what they figured out how to do was to modify the corn and the soy so that it wouldn't die. See, they had a problem. They could spray those chemicals on them and they would kill weeds and grass, but they also killed the corn and the soy. They figured out how to modify them genetically so that you could spray on. So in other words, go back. They used to have to spray it very carefully because they could kill the corn and the soy. They figured out how to modify the corn and soy so that they could spray it and it wouldn't kill the corn and soy. Ever get the problem there? That freed them up to be able to spray the fields even more with the chemical because it didn't kill the corn and soy because they modified it. So it's not always just the modification, which a lot of people talk about. It's the effect of being able to spray more chemicals on these and not kill them and kill the local grasses, which became a big problem. So more and more of these things, you know, there's, there's other effects of them. So, you know, I'm a big fan of organic. And one thing I want to share is that list of what's known as the dirty dozen and the clean 15. So when you, there are, there are quite a few apps 
that what's the name of the app that we use for that? Uh, uh, Think Dirty. Yeah, there's a Think Dirty app. There's a bunch of them. And they're and what, all from the environmental working group. So yeah. they, what they're trying to show you is what are the good fruits and the good veggies to buy. In other words, there are some known as the Clean 15, and then there's the Dirty Dozen. The Dirty Dozen are the ones that you look at and say, if you buy these 12, these are the ones that you definitely should buy organic. And I'll tell you this, strawberries, and you can look it up online, strawberries are almost always at the top of the list, always at the top of the list, okay? And there's a lot of reasons for that. But if you go through that list, there's I look at that list all the time, and I'm like, okay, these are the ones I'm definitely buying organic. And then there's the other ones that, you know, you want to try to go to organic, but they're not as big a deal. You could go more, you know, more of a normal-looking uh, group of avocados for instance or sweet corn those are on those lists but those are good things to start thinking as you start shopping in this world yeah so basically you know we want to stay as, as, as clean as we possibly can stay away from your gmos you know we always talk about making sure you have free range you know grass-fed meats and we'll talk about that in a second but look you can't undo bad meat uh and then really any, anything that's uh, you know uh, processed with pesticides um, you know, you just, you can't undo the damage that's created by those things. And most of those things are toxics. And really there's only two things you put in your body. One's a toxin, one's a nutrient. And the problem is, is with anything that man's modified, it's more toxin there. So rule number three, if you cannot do without, throw it you, out, you got to get rid of it. One more time. If you cannot do without, you got to throw it out. Yeah. So like, think about something in your life right now that you can't do without. Maybe it's five o'clock somewhere. Yep. Yep. Not a good. This is another reason, by the way, I did the raw food diet uh -huh. because I would try to find out where the addictions were. You know, the person come back and go, I, I couldn't do the raw diet. I couldn't do it. And you go, why? And they go, or or what broke you off it? And they'll say, well, I, I have to admit, I had that. Uh, I had the muffin. I had to have my chocolate. Yeah. You, you, you'll you quickly find your food addictions um, and they're real. I, there's a really good book. I always tell people to read. It's called Breaking the Food Seductions by Neil Bernard. He's a medical doctor. Great book talking about how we're addicted to foods. And it made me realize a lot of times it wasn't just that I was hungry, it's that there's an addiction. My brain actually is driving me towards certain foods. For instance, the McDonald's logo, it's like Pavlov's dog. When we see the logo from many of us, you think, oh, I'll stop and eat. Turns out you weren't actually hungry, but the logo triggered your brain, makes you salivate, you go and eat. So these addictions, and, and I think down here a little bit if we get time, we'll talk more about addictions and habits, but it releases dopamine in your brain. And I'll talk about a book in a little bit. And you got to look at those food addictions because we all tend to have them. And some of the worst ones are these alcohols, these coffee, the white breads, the, the yeah, sugars, like, the sugars are huge. Yeah, the biggest thing that I, that I hear is like, what, you mean I have to give up my coffee? Like, what, you can't give up your coffee? No, that means you're an addict to coffee. Does that make sense? You know, well, what about red wine? Can I just have one glass of red wine? Like, like the things that we have a heart, we can't do without, those are the things that we really need to get rid of um, because those are the things that are controlling us. Yeah, and by the way, the real quick test on that is do exactly what you just said. Just try to go without it for a week and see how you go. And you'll find the level of your craving and you'll find how great your brain is at ambushing. Yeah. Right? As soon as you, um, I've talked to a few people, they're like, I stop coffee, but as soon as I stop coffee, something stressful happens and I have to start drinking it. And right. that's true for alcohol. Same thing with like someone that's a smoker, right? They're like, I, I just like smoking. And I'm, I say, well, why don't you try stop smoking and see how much you like it? And then you ask them two days later and like they're in jail because they wanted to choke everybody because they, they you know what I mean? Yeah, so, so it's important to find your addictions. That's one thing I want you to look for right now. And then next week, start discovering what food items or products that you have an addiction to. All right. So here's what we're going to talk about. So the, we talked about the three things that the three basic rules, but we're going to talk about three different uh, new challenges today. Okay. And the first one's going to be what we call the basic lifestyle changes or the basic challenge. So the basic challenge is, is really, uh, you know, there's so many nutritional changes that you can make, but if you just make these three uh, nutritional changes, they're the most effective ones there. Um, you know, I would say the first two changes, they're easy really to implement. I mean, the, the first one is just removing bad fats, replacing them with good fats, changing the meats that you eat. Those are the, the easiest ones to do because it's a choice that you can make at the store. Um, uh, but and, and I think that but the third one is, the, and I would say is the, one of the more challenging changes is be, and, and really difficult because for the most part, re removing processed grains and refined sugars from your diet. Um, those are one of the things that's the most addictive there. Yeah. You know, I, I, one of the things I, I like to tell people too is when you go to a restaurant and you have your favorite restaurant and you want to go eat there and you think, man, this is so great. Keep in mind that the people preparing that food, 
they're not necessarily preparing it for health typically, they're preparing it for taste, uh, to feed those habits that we have on sugar or whatever. Um, and so you want, I want you to start thinking mindset here. Like, am I eating just to, I think I, had, I think you had said about like, we eat just to please the taste buds. Yeah, it, it's ed- entertainment. Yeah, you, you're just, I want the sugar because it gives me a quick little high, it triggers my brain pleasure centers and things are great. If we can start changing your mindset, and that's honestly what this whole challenge is about, we got to start changing your mindset that you're eating for nutrition and you're eating for health, not just for the cheap thrill of the sugar hit that you get in your brain for that. So these, I I love these three changes because they're actually fairly easy. You know, just changing the fats, changing the meats that you're eating, and try to drop some sugars down. I think it's these are the easy three that we should all be doing, and then we should all be modifying. Yeah. So I think basically the main thing is is that like. If you've never started, like I, I tell people, this is the basic diet if you actually want to live a healthy life. Yeah. And not even a healthy life, a normal life. Because most people are like, what do you mean changing some of these things? The problem is, is that we're so far off many times of what is actually normal. That Remember, normal is only compared to yesterday. So whatever we did yesterday is just normal, but it's not normal for our genetics. And so we, you know, we look around the world right now, and we, we're the number one country, industrialized country for chronic disease. So what's normal in the United States is not normal. Or the world there. Okay, so I think that, that what we're going to do is we're going to break this down. So um, just so you know, like in this process, some people have the ability to say, I'm going to make a, a lateral shift and do it all at once. Other people are like, okay, I need to take some time to do these things. Um, and so just set your, if you're going to take time, set yourself a timeline, say week one, I'm going to do this. Week two, I'm going to do this. Week three, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to start mastering it. We put a lot of notes in here. And so First thing that I find is, is is the easiest thing to do is to actually change our fats, and that's and that's really uh, it's super important because in changing our fats, what we what we find is is that you know most people we got brought up on this fat makes you fat, but you know the wrong fats, the hydrogenated fats, the hydrogenated oils, you know, in some counties they've even you know banned trans fats. Those are the things that lead to cancer. Those are the things that lead to chronic disease, and. And those are the things that that, that that lead to diabetes, and which is a really a leading cause of death in the United States right now. And so in your notes, we put a tremendous amount of information on cooking, what fats to cook yeah. with, you know, what types of oils to cook with, what temperatures. And we'll go over that in a second. Um, but, you know, what are, what's an unsaturated fat and polyunsaturated fat? But we've given you in your, in your handouts and in the list, we've given you a whole list of uh, what are the good fats and the bad fats and the ones that you throw out. And we, our attempt is... To make sure that you understand that. Yeah, and, and when you talk, keep in mind, everybody, oils and fats, same thing. This is the exact same thing. And one of the things is you'll get oils that do better for cooking on high temperature. We're going to talk about that. Oils that do better with low cooking. And there's a, you, when you take, even if you take a good fat and you damage it with the heating process, it can be very detrimental to your health. So we're going to, you know, in the notes, we've done a great job of listing a lot of those fats, the ones that's a big question we get. Once, things changed from the 60s and 70s when they stopped realizing and said, okay, we got this wrong. See, when they stripped fats off of our diets, they just added a lot of sugar because they had to get the taste because fat and sugar is the taste. When they stripped fats away from us in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, they just added an enormous amount of sugar and they've created a huge inflammatory process that creates all kinds of health problems for us and cancers and things. So we're going to try to get you back eating the right fats and so there's a ton of information. We're not even going to go through it all of it in your notes that you can read through and look at the fats that we recommend. Yeah. So basically, that we we put tips in there on like the right fats to cook with, helping you understand what what good are fats or bad fats. So just make sure you're using your veg. You get rid of all the vegetable oils there. If you're still using vegetable oils and you've been listening to us, this is the time to start to change it. Um, and, and really understanding what a, a an ox like a yeah. refined oil is there. Yeah. One more thing on that, by the way. Health, it really turns out, is about microcirculation. And that is, can you get the oxygen and the nutrients down to those tiny little cells? And these wrong fats are plugging that up in our blood system, and it's making it impossible for us to get our blood to the very distant part of our bodies. And so keeping the right fats play a huge part in our microcirculation, which is a big part of our health. Yeah, I think the, the, with that whole thing about fat makes you fat, right, or yeah. fat's bad for you, really came from World War One, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, with the invention of margarine. And we never really had heart disease issues until we started having these processed fats. And those are what they call the shelf stable fats, the ones that, you know, you can have in your cabinet and not go rancid there. Okay. So let's just quickly run through a couple of things. Different fats or different oils when we're cooking can be used. Like you want to use different oils there. So we put a nice list together of which oil you should, you should use when you're cooking there. Um, you know, like, you know, all like your almond oils, your coconut oils, those things, the, the important thing to know about this is that 
if you take it, if you cook with an oil and if the temperature is too hot, it immediately turns it into a trans fat, which means a trans fat is a type of fat that clogs up your cells for 102 days. Okay. So think about that. Like literally you're, you're eating eggs and you're, the, the temperature gets too hot with the wrong oil. I decide to use butter or something when you're cooking there. Literally, you're, you're, you're making yourself sick for 102 days, preventing detoxification and preventing nutrients from getting to the cell. 100%. All right. So the next one, so we put a list together of the, the high heat cooking oils there. We put a list together of the medium heat cooking oils there. This is where you find like your butter and your ghee. Like you want to keep those temperatures down. And they're only for, they're not for like, they're just for like searing, not like, like a, a, you know, a like like sustained temperatures there. But you, this is where you could use your olive oils there. Um, but mostly we find that olive oil is better like on salads and like cool things. You don't want to typically, you can bake with it, but don't put those high temperatures there. Hey, you know, one thing that I've noticed when, whenever I see this, like I always, this is super interesting and, and you can see how the molecular structure changes of the fats when they get heated and, and they, they change and everything. I don't think many people actually know the temperature that they're cooking at on the stovetop. Yeah. Um, I mean, you throw out 350, 400 and, um, one thing that we have at home is one of those thermometers and you can actually point it. And I, when I did that, was stunned at how hot the pans are that we're yeah. cooking on. You know, you turn it up to high, you should know how hot those are because yeah. that'll give you an idea of how hot. Most people have no clue. You'll see the temperature and you'll say, oh, that makes sense. But there's no measurement of how hot those pans are getting. So I would recommend either get one or have someone come and look because you'll get you'll be surprised at how hot. Or go you, raw. Yeah, or go raw. Or go raw. You don't have to worry. You know, we have a 1954 Amen. O'Keefe and Merritt. And all it says is the, all the numbers are worn off the dial. You kind of <laughs> guess on that. All right. So then the, the, the other thing is this, is the, 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 any like things like fish oils, right? You know, hemp oils, all these very delicate oils. Um, you know, you never, ever want to have high heat on those. In fact, most of these oils are best consumed raw. Um, yeah. as opposed to being as, as opposed to cooking with them now. which is really awkward because that's not how we all grew up right nobody was telling us to eat these raw no one was explaining how to use the oils right grandma and grandpa just used lard and whatever they had they just threw on there so as as we've learned more the problem with science is advances funeral by funeral people learn what you learn when you're young and that's how you progress and we're here to say we've learned a lot about the oils the oils are a big deal these fats are really important to us and getting the right ones are really key yeah, I knew my dad was done cooking when the, when we could smell the smoke. <laughs> he was like, turn up the heat as high as you can, throw the eggs on there, have it done in 30 seconds there. Um, and so when I when my, I used to set up the smoke alarm, my wife would get angry at me, but now I understand. All right, so let's talk about this, okay? So now we've been talking about fat for a whole bunch of time. I think the main thing is this, is that the, we're going to be talking about having diets that are ha that are higher in fat. And people are like, well, Dr. Osborne, you know, fat makes me fat. Why would I eat fat? Like, if that was the case, like, we would we've had this low fat diet revolution for the last you know 40 50 years how's that worked out uh, i think we have one of the fattest countries in the world we right we and you know obesity problem. has gone up what would almost like now like what are we talk about over 50 percent of yeah. people are overweight or obese yeah and it's planning a lot higher than that yeah they're estimating that like up to like in like if we go fast forward in 10 years from now they're estimating it to be between 60 and 70 percent of people are going to be overweight or obese yeah. um, 18 percent of kids are already obese right now so look like everything we, the way you've been told is wrong because if it was right, then everybody would be healthy, but everybody's wrong. So it's not that fat doesn't make, it's not fat doesn't make you fat. It's your inability to burn fat. And we'll talk about later, there's a hormone called leptin uh, that, that, that it's basically, um, and it regulates fat burning there. And many times toxicity, a lot of these, you know, these high levels of sugar will prevent leptin, your fat burning hormone from working. That's why fat actually, you know, why, why we get fat there. Yep, okay. I agree 100%. Fat, I want, when we when you guys start looking at fats, let's explain a little bit, and we I guess we can go through it now, but, you know, 60% of your brain is made of fat. We need these fats, but we need the right fats. And then we're going to get, are we doing the omega-3 right now, omega-6, or is there a no, down the road? No, oh, we'll come back to it. Okay, so we're going to talk about that, and it's really crucial, and I'm going to challenge all of you to get your uh, omega-3, omega-6 ratios tested, because that's one of the key factors for how our body works with the fats. Okay, uh, next one, uh, butter is bad, right? Like, look, I will tell you this. There, I read a study where they, once where they are talking about if you ate butter every day, every single meal, you would lose weight. Like if that was your only source of calories, you would lose weight. And that's actually ketogenic, it puts you in a ketosis there. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is, is that butter actually has something called arachidonic acid in it, which actually aids in fat burning. Now this doesn't mean that you need to 
have 10,000 calories a day of butter and then, you know, have a whole bunch of sugar with it. That should not, not be the take that's, message. That's not the message there. But the, 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 the butter actually has arachidonic acid is incredibly, I mean, linoleic acid, CLA, is incredibly important in that. Okay, this is my favorite one. Yeah, I know number is, three. I mean, I could talk about this one, one uh, for days and weeks and months. <laughs> Um, so I live, our office is right next to Burger King, right? And you don't know it because uh, we smell it all day. I'm yep. joking. We know it all day. Um, but the thing is, is that people are like, well, Dr. Osborne, uh, 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 actually, this is the best one. My son works at In-N-Out Burger right now, and people drive through the drive through and they take a look, and they're like, oh, you're Dr. Osborne's <laughs> son. And he's like, I'm not telling. Well, look, I, I don't care what you do. Like, the, you, we're all adults here. But when you eat a French fry... That, that that French fry will actually sit on your cells for a minimum of 51 days. They expect about 102 days from the time you eat a bad fat, a French fry, a trans fat, like a like a like one of those vegetable oil fats, will literally sit on your on your fat cells there. Yeah, and if you just, on your cells. if you if you want to do something fun on this is, and if you haven't seen this movie, Super Size Me clear, clearly shows this. Just Super Size Me is about a guy who decides to only eat at McDonald's for 30 days, but he does a really good job of all of his blood work before and his blood work at the end, and he will just show you what it's like if you eat that stuff on a regular basis. You will become unhealthy, and it doesn't take long. It's within days and weeks. Things start going down really, really fast. So those fat, those those products are all made to make you addicted with the sugar, I mean, with the, yeah, the sugar and the salts and things, which really dial you in, but clearly they are not in that nature made food department by any means. Well, I think one of the things, you know, as chiropractors, look, you, you know, your brain controls the function of your body and it sends messages down your spinal cord out to every single tissue, cell, and organ. So for your heart to beat or your lungs to breathe, for you to hear me or see me, those messages have to get down. And so when we eat these these trans fats, these fried fats, they literally, they, they, they affect the transmission of nerves. And so somebody comes in, they're like, Dr. Osborne, my body's not healing the way that it should. And, and, and I'm doing all my home care and I can't understand why my body's healing it. Well, it, there's no way it can heal because literally 102 days, what is that, four months, three and a half months? So stop eating trans fats for three months and then we'll see how you, those nerves start to transmit there. You know, one of, the, one of the most interesting things I saw not too long ago and they were talking, it was an article that was talking about what life is and defining life. And one of the things that defines something alive is assimilation. What that means is, a living being will take other products, assimilate them in, and be, make those things become part of them. In other words, it's the old saying, you are what you eat. In other words, if you're going to eat garbage food, just think of that. When you eat that greasy, ugly, unhealthy French fry, it goes into your body. When I, when I was reading this, I was like, oh, we're like aliens. It's so interesting. We eat these products, whether it's lettuce, a vegetable, or unhealthy food. As it goes into your body, your body breaks it down, and it literally becomes you. You are literally becoming a greasy French fry. That's the products that your body has to break down, as opposed to, say, fruits and vegetables, which were made for us and are on this planet naturally. So I want you to always realize whatever you're putting in is going to be assimilated. It's going to be broken down, and those products are going into your cells. They're either making them healthier or unhealthier, and cancers are unhealthy cells. So we got to feed people with good, healthy food because that's what you want to become. Yeah, so like you are saying, like, you know, for me, it always comes back to a chiropractic thing, right? So we know that uh, you know your brain's made up of fat. You're eating trans fats. You're eating those French fries. Yep. That's why when they have kids that have hyperactivity and focus issues, they take them off the trans fats, and their brains start working right there. Yep. But especially at times like this, you know, nobody's disagreeing that the the people that are susceptible to the COVID virus, it's because they have a lowered immunity. And guess what the bad fats do? They lower your immunity. And guess how long they do it for 102 days. Okay. Yeah. In prep for this, by the way, I had looked at a study and I, I don't think I showed it to you. There was a study I just pulled up PubMed like two days ago that talked about eating French fries created premature death on people eating French fries. They just measured the amount, the more French fries people ate, the earlier they died. It was just that was all the study was. I mean, it's it's not like we're talking about stuff that's up in the air that, oh, maybe this is true. This is obviously clearly how it works. And we all know that. And so you'll get people who go, but I just want my French fries. Like, but, that goes, but that goes back to rule number two, right? 100%. 100%. If you can't give it up, then you got to give it up. That's okay. Right. All right. So let's go. Let's kind of move on right here. So here's the thing. We're going to talk to change the meats that we eat. Uh, Dr. Sherry, you want to take that one? Yeah. So the key for the meat. So I'm a vegetarian. I'm not. Um, he's not. I'm a vegetarian slash vegan. Um, I, I've chosen not to eat meats, but I always, whenever I do my health talks, I always tell people, listen, if you're going to eat meats, 
You've got to eat the right ones. That's what we agree on. Because sure. processed meats are clear. There are tons of studies on this. When you process the meat, you add things to it and you change it, it is devastating. I have a study right here. I just pulled it up just the other day talking about, it says unprocessed red and processed meats and the risk of coronary artery disease and type 2 diabetes. And this whole study just talks about how horrible processed meats are. The hot dogs, the bolognese, all of those are just devastating to your health. Listen, if you're going to eat them, okay, so be it. But that just means you're buying yourself a shorter life, hands down. Hands down it is. There's no there's no arguing, I think, at this point. Yeah, I think I, I, I tell the story all the time when uh, my mother-in-law was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I had talked to the doctor and I said, what causes prostate cancer? He goes, oh, probably about 70% of prostate cancers comes from these processed meats there. Yep. Uh, and guess what? That's one of the most lethal cancers. But it's really the problem is you eat sick meat, you become sick. It's the bioaccumulation, you know, the pesticides and the herbicides and the antibiotics and the hormones. Yeah. Uh, they, they concentrate. And so you can't undo the damage that's caused by bad meat there. So just because you're at Costco and they have like, you know, quick meat there, yeah. um, it's, it's cheap and inexpensive, you're actually. Uh, yes, you're saving money on the short term, but you're costing your health on the long term. The other thing that's really important is like if you're going to eat your meat, the grass-fed, uh, grass-fed, pasture-raised, um, they, they, they offer so many more fatty acids that are missing in the standard American diet, and especially the conjugated linoleic acid. And CLA is your what kind of hormone? Your fat burner. It, it's a fat burner. It's the thing that's one of the things that stimulates it. So, uh, and then I know you wanted to talk about the omega three to omega six. Yeah. So let me one more thing really quick on that. When when we look at like cancers and we look at the red meat connection with colon cancers mm-hmm. and all these other cancers, um, you know, cancer is cells dysfunctioning. These are sick cells that have gone off the course and gone the other way. And when we start talking about microcirculation and making sure your cells work right, all the way down to the mitochondria, which is the small little energy part of the cell that makes energy for it, we've got to provide those little factories with the right things. And if you're giving them the wrong fats, you're giving them all these processed meats. And then don't be shocked when you look back and go, wait, how did I get this? Well, if you're putting in bad things into your body, to assimilate and create your cells, you're going to create that problem. If we're in that condition, we're going to talk about a diet in a little bit. If you're already there, how do you get out of that? How do you start giving your body? I think the coolest thing that I've learned about health over the last 25 to 30 years is how resilient the human being is and how it doesn't take a lot for it to start coming right back on board. You know, you stop smoking, your lungs start healing instantly. Things start coming back. So when we have these conditions, all hope isn't gone. We can rally back and come back. Okay. One of the things I always challenge people is when we start talking about fats is the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. I would be willing to bet if we looked out and talked to everyone who's watching this, most of you don't know what the ratio is in your blood. We have discovered for years that the omega-3 fatty acids are absolutely crucial for our nervous system to function right. The omega-6 fatty acids actually feed the inflammatory system. So the question was, where are these fats? The omega-6 fatty acids are full in corn and vegetables, and these animals eat them, and the meats are very, very high in omega-6. So let me say something. The ratio in your blood, because we do the testing here, should be one to one or anywhere between one omega-3 to maybe three or four omega-6s. They believe that thousands of years ago, the human beings ate a diet that was about one to one in ratio. And we find out, sure enough, people whose ratios are low one omega-3 to maybe three omega-6 fatty acids do really, really well. The studies that I've read said if you go one omega-3 to 10 omega-6s, you're in really dangerous situation. They said if you're one in 15, one omega-3 fatty acid to 15 omega-6s, the studies say you're doomed. You're doomed for cardiovascular disease and all and cancers and all these problems. The average American, guys, is one in 22. That's how bad this is. And if you're up that high, the studies say clear as well, you're heading that way. You've got to change that. And it all comes back to the food and the fats that you eat and how you get those omega-3s. We can talk about what we have here. I think we've got a great source of omega-3s here. But getting those supplemented, is, it's absolutely crucial. Yeah, and I just, I, you know, I, I, I've consistently run, we have a test that we actually do here. It's called brain span. And you can actually just a finger prick it. I'll tell you what your ratios are. Yeah. And I, unfortunately, I get a lot of people that, like, my brain's just not working. And I get these people that are, have early onset dementia and Alzheimer's. And, you know, their ratios are 1 to 46, 1 to 50. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just like, and, and they're wondering why their brain's not working. They're in a chronic state of inflammation. So, like, our kids that have ADD, ADHD, um, that's one of the first things that we try to we try to change there. Okay. Yeah. So if you're not taking an omega three and you don't have a perfect diet, that's a first step, right? That's a that's a very specific important fat that you need to add to your diet. And just so you know, 
all the grains, all the, the grain fed beef, all the uh, farm raised animals, uh, yeah. like the, the, I mean the fish, those are all, all fed grains which have high omega, uh, omega sixes. So literally eating bad meats cr literally creates inflammation and really has a negative impact on your long term health there. And one more thing on the omega threes, I don't have the study in front of me, but uh, they were showing how colon cancers and breast cancers have these upside down ratios. I mean, it's clear as bell. You can go through and check these and see that ratio. It's upside down. This is, if you listen, if you get nothing more out of this, and this is the only thing you walk away from this webinar is you sit through this hour plus time and say, I'm going to fight to get my omega threes. I would say you win, you win if you battle and get your omega threes back under control, because it's so important across the board. Cancers, it's just unbelievable when you see that. Yeah, so basically, look, you know, we talk about myths and truths, you know, um, the big truth is this, is it's not the meat, right? It's what man has done to it. You ever notice it's like, it's, it's like everything that we put into our mouth that's bad for us, it's something that man has done to us. You know, cows are meant to like walk around, you know, like we're supposed to have wild game, but fish are meant to, you know, swim in the sea, not to be uh, in farms there. So it's the, the it's not the the, the 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 meat necessarily, but it's the it's what we've done to the meat, what we've done to the oils. Um, those are the things that create the heart disease there. So um, you know, it's also interesting. You know, we see all these these meats. Like, you know, there's a Harvard study that was I think you were talking about that one about how it creates a threefold increase in type two diabetes, and we yeah. have something like seventy million people in the United States right now that are either type two diabetic or going to be type two diabetic. You know, and another thing, when you guys are listening to this, you, you know, I know. Typically, people come up afterwards and go, you know, when I heard you talk, I thought of my mother or I thought of my father or my brother or whatever. There's always people you're thinking about. These are huge problems. You know, diabetes, these cancers, cardiovascular disease, I mean, these are devastating diseases to our population. All of these things that point directly to that, you have to take action. I mean, like the omega-3, omega-6 is so clean cut. You know, eating the processed meats, that's not up to debate. That's a slam dunk. You you that you have to stop immediately. And I'm, we're, I think what... The goal here is to give you guys the motivation because as we prevent these plans, present them to you and you start looking at them, you got to find the motivation. And the motivation is it's clear as day. If you don't do it, you go the other direction towards unhealthy uh, living and a shorter life. And then, you know, could be a rough or death like I opened with. Yeah. So, Kelly, just on a quick response to your question. Yes, most of the nonstick sprays um, are, are toxic for us. Uh, and so I would just try to avoid that if you're, um, you know, and especially if you're having Teflon pans. Um, you know, that, that's a, a different discussion. We actually did a whole video on, on Teflon pans, but you know, they were, they were going to be banned. So if you, if you need more information on that, just, you know, leave, just say, I need more information. We'll make sure we get that for you. Tomorrow. Hey, that Teflon pan thing though is also when we were talking about the heat, Yeah. you know, the Teflon pan gets hot and it starts popping bad things into the food. We know that, uh, they've known that. Uh, if you take a look at their research, they know that's why you see the warning on the on those pans to not get them that hot. And I again, I would make the argument: most of you don't have a clue what the temperature is. I don't. When I turn it on, I just turn it on. I don't know what it's getting to. Well, this is kind of what it's, this is why Dr. Sherry and I have our desk next to each next to each other, so we can just talk all the time like this. So, welcome to our office. Uh, so, I think the third one that we're going to talk about is we're going to be talking about removing all the processed grains and refined sugars from your diet. Look, guys, you know if you've listened to any class any time that we've ever talked. You know, we always talk about getting rid of the white powder there, okay? And so we really do have to, you know, it's the white, the white rice and the pastas there. Um, those are the things that, that, that create a tremendous amount of inflammation. And there are literally hundreds and hundreds of studies that talk about this. But really, you know, we, what we want to find is that one third of the sugar consumption that most people have, it comes from our soft drinks. And two thirds of their sugar intake comes from hidden sources, like things like lunch meats and pizzas and sauces and breads and soups and crackers and fruit drinks and, and things like that, you know, um, all these. And so the big thing is you have to understand that sugar is an anti-nutrient. It offers like literally insignificant to no amount of, of, of vitamins and minerals and it robs your body of all these precious nutrients. Um, but also the other thing that the refined sugars, they cause this um, elevated insulin spike and they, and they affect leptin, which is, if you remember, is your fat burning hormone. So this prolonged spikes in elevated insulin and leptin, they lead to uh, resistance. And then when you're resistant to burning fat and uh, basically we develop diabetes and we develop weight loss resistance. So like, there's the, there's literally no way that uh, we can ever lose weight eating the, the amount of sugar that most people eat there. Yeah, I think this is this is hands down one of the biggest problems that we have with our health. Um, 
you know, when we look back at human beings, we, we're, we clearly are designed to burn carbohydrates and carbohydrates is sugars. And so we were rewarded. Our brains were rewarded. If you were thousands of years ago out wandering around and you found something with a sugar component to it, we were rewarded in our brain. Our pleasure centers go off. Our brain has said, that's good stuff. Let's get more of that. And it served us really, really well. You know, even back in the 1700s, the consumption of sugar, we think now in one year was less than what most Americans eat in one day. Uh, we're up to over 150 pounds of sugar per year per American. And I would love for you to get a big bucket of sugar of 150 pounds. And if you think, man, that's what people are consuming into their body. Like you, you, you think, oh, I'll just have this little thing of sugar. It's not a big deal. And that one little one in its own little world might not be, but if you consider 150 pounds of sugar per year, if you stack up, you know, the average American child, they say is drinking about one soda per day now. That's 350 sodas. Just pack those up in your house one time and take a look at that amount of sugar that's going into the body. We get addicted to it very easy. That's why there's so much of it because the simple sugars go straight into our brain. They hit your pleasure center. There's a study done with rats. I think you and I talked yeah. about this. They took rats. They got them addicted to cocaine. These aren't the nicest. These are drug dealers obviously doing the deal. Yeah. So they get these rats addicted to cocaine. So the rat knew I could go. I could get the cocaine. They then opened another side with sugar water. And over time, what they found across the board is the rats would prefer going to sugar water than cocaine. Now, why? Because they like carbohydrates. Their brain is driven that way. If this wasn't true, we wouldn't have sugar in almost every single thing we eat. It's everywhere. And unfortunately, we have a love-hate with sugar. As much as our body likes it, the simple sugars just take devastation on inflammation in our body and create these chronic diseases. So across the board, I'd recommend we start dropping your sugar. It's probably, again, the omega-3, huge deal. You got to get those fats. The next big thing is you've got to drop these simple sugars out because they're just really playing havoc on our inflammatory system. The combination of high sugar, which feeds the inflammatory system, with the ratio of the wrong omega fats, you know, you get the omega-6s, they feed that inflammatory chain, is just been devastating. So those are the two big things we got to work on. Well, and just so you guys know, look, we, we talked about if you, if you can't say no to it, like if you can't give it up, you have to give it up. And so here's how you know what, like if somebody, if it's a drug, right? Somebody goes through a classic de detox reaction, they get headaches and shakes and they get gastrointestinal problems, fatigue and mood swings. Like these are the things of the, that when people give up sugar. And so just so you know, if, you, if you're a sugar addict, that's okay. It's just what it is because that's how we've been brought up, okay? But what we find when kids, like they, they take sugar out of their diet, they get less sickness, uh, you know, uh, fewer behavioral changes, they get better sleep. The sugar suppresses our immune system. And what we do know is it takes about a week, okay, uh, for us to be, break our, our the, the physiologic sugar cravings. Unfortunately, it takes longer than that many times to break the habits that we created over a lifetime. I would say across the board, whenever I work with someone in nutrition and I'm trying to get them off of dairy or if I'm getting off sugar, 30 days. The magic number is 30 days. You've got to be off of these food products for a minimum of 30 days before you start getting over that addiction. And that's where the starting point is. And the first 30 days are hard. I mean, you take someone off any addiction, it's gonna to be tough for the first 30 days. Yeah, so basically here's the thing. So as far as sugar tips, you, you know, you, like I said, you lose the cravings in about a week. Um, you know, the other thing is, is looking at the sugar content on the on the labels of everything that you're eating. If you can't read it, don't eat it. But you know, wherever it says carbohydrate, just divide it by five, that's the number of grams of sugar that there are there. Avoid anything that, you know, high fructose corn syrup, you know, and anything that has an os in the name, um, has sugar in it. Okay. That's the quick and easy thing there. So, you know, we just know that, uh, you know, typically we like to have our grams of, of carbohydrates somewhere around, you know, 35 to 50 for a healthy lifestyle there. Um, you know, a bagel is like 44 grams of, of carbohydrate there. Do you know why I stopped eating bagels? Cause I read um, one thing, one thing I read. See, whenever I talk about bagels, he gets all insecure and he dashes out of the room. <laughs> so I stopped eating bagels because I read one thing. One bagel was equivalent of five pieces of bread. And that single handedly fact is what stopped me from having bagels. I thought there's no way I should eat five pieces of bread in the morning before I go to work. Well, I actually, I'll one up you on that. I, I read a, an article that talked about how eating a piece of bread will raise your blood sugar faster than a piece of chocolate. Yeah. So think so, of that. Yeah. So the, a bagel, five pieces of bread, up goes the blood sugar. It has to be stored. Your body, listen, to, here's the thing about sugar, by the way, since we're still there. We have a love-hate, like I mentioned. And what I mean by love-hate is too much sugar isn't just like oh, our bodies like it. It kills us. 
you can become sugar intoxicated and die from too much sugar. So the body has to massively pull that out. You eat simple sugars, up goes the blood sugar, the body has to dump insulin into the system or we die. You go into shock. So the body will pull that, it dumps it in and it goes right into fat. That's where it has to go. So the body will definitely clear out that simple sugar, which is why eating the fruits and vegetables with the fiber is so important because it slows the process down. The sugar hits the system much slower with the, all the amount of fiber. Okay, so here's what I want to do. Um, just to review with you guys. The first one is, is uh, the three basic rules. If, if God did not create the food, don't eat it, right? If the second basic rule is if, if, if man changed it, don't eat it. And the third basic rule is if you can't give it up, give it up, okay? That's to keep it simple. So we go with, and then the, the three, the basic plan is sugars, fats, and toxins, okay? Um, it's just, those are the three simple things. We're gonna have to modify that. We'll, we have all, all the food lists there. I'm not gonna give you meal plans to say, okay, eat this meal and you have to make this. I wanna empower you. We wanna empower you to be your own doctor on this one. We wanna be, to be your own leader. We're here to support you. And if you need resources there, um, we're there. But the other thing, in a second, we're going to go through a whole bunch of other stuff um, that's really important. But I, there's a couple questions that I always get. Um, number one is, you know, what is intermittent fasting? And so I, we put this in there. Basically, um, intermittent fasting is an opportunity for your body to actually start burning fat. So I wrote a book called 21 Day Transformation. If you need a copy of it, I have a whole section in there on, on, on intermittent fasting if you'd like to read it. Um, it's very powerful. I know you, you know yep. we both intermittent fast. I don't eat till one o'clock usually. Yeah, um, I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I don't eat until lunch. Yeah, and I, what I find is is that it allows me to have clarity, and it, like for us to be able to have the energy, we get a nice even burn with that, and it keeps our blood sugar from going up. During I want to I want to prep that by the way. When I started doing it, the first few days were tough. There's yeah. no doubt. I, I felt shaky. It, my, it, it was a very mental psychology thing. I think for yeah. me, I was like, oh, I haven't eaten. I haven't eaten. I haven't shake, and then. After I did it over and over, I actually got to where it's pretty comfortable. It doesn't really bother me anymore. Yeah, I just I usually tell people, you know, start off slow, right? You know, like we talked about, you know, if if you eat every four hours, try not to eat for six hours, okay? And then make it up to seven hours, and eight hours, nine hours, ten hours. You know, you know, we I try to have about somewhere between twelve to sixteen hours. But this is for a different topic, for a different conversation. But I just really wanted to uh, address that with you because there, if you want to know more about it, just let us know. I'll give you a copy of the book. Um, so that you can have it there. It's a good practice to start uh, yeah. working. And it's, it's it's kind of a next level thing, but if you're having challenges or you're stressed out about having to have three, your three meals a day, this might be something that you can talk to us about there. Uh, now, you guys have always heard about, we have what we call the, the, the basic core plan and the advanced plan. And so people were like, well, I just want to go ketogenic. I'm like, okay. So ketogenic is just the word for the day. Does that make sense? Like it's like, like we always have like these, like these cool fads so we've been, you know, talking about this for the last. We just had our what, 25th anniversary. We did. Yeah, we, years. we've been together longer than most people have been married, right? <laughs> we still like each other. So the point is, is that like what we've been talking about for the last 25, like we, everything we've been talking about for the last 25 years is what they call ketogenic right now. And so basically, it's you know, we want to have the high fat, right? It increases your brain function, and so you know that is the, the one of the key things, you know. You know, the difference between the core plan and the, the advanced plan is there's, you know, there's more uh, fat in the advanced plan and more grains in the in the basic uh, core plan there. Um, but, you know, either way, most of your vegetables should be leafy green vegetables. And so, um, you know, look, no matter what it is, whether it's 20 years ago or now, principles of health haven't changed. They always stay the same. Yeah. You know, your brain controls everything. You put garbage in, you get garbage out. Um, and, you know, there's still a power that made the body and it heals the body there. All right. So here's the easy way to remember. You want to talk about her? Meet Fat Sally. And we don't have any, we actually checked to see if anybody was registered named Sally just to, just to make sure there are no Sally's on, the, on, the, on watching this right now. But look, you know, meeting Fat Sally is this. It's just a good way to remember. You, eat, you look at your meal and you say, I'm looking at my meats, I'm looking at my fats, and I'm looking at my sugars there. And so it's a great, easy way. Um, when you're looking at your foods there to see, hey, look, do I have those ancient grains in there or do I have man-made grains in there? So just start thinking about your rules. Keep it simple as you're going through on the kind of the basic the, the, the basic uh, challenge plan there. All right. So I do want to, I, I, we're going to kind of go through a couple things, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because we've already done a lot of work um, helping you understand um, you know, the different proteins, um, you know, we got their eggs. There's a, there's a, a plethora of proteins out there. Um,
But the one thing I will say, and then on your challenge plan, there are lists of all the different kinds of meats. You will have the resources there. But I do want to make sure that, you know, sometimes people, um, they get overwhelmed with doing certain things. And so what I usually encourage people, um, they're, they're like, what do I eat? And, you know, I, I, I usually eat, you know, five meals a day. My, my sister just started, uh, you know, this plan and she's down like 15 pounds in the last few, few weeks. And she was really the, the inspiration for me for doing this talk, because if she can do it, who else can do it? Everybody. Can do it. Right. And she, it was always, a, you know, like a, like a gene thing. I don't have time. So what she really did is started working with, you know, she, she, we have a, what we call Pure Path Protein. We have plant proteins here. She had like a good grass fed or healthy protein source there. And she took Green Vibrance, which is a really high quality, nutrient dense, mix those in there and that's what she had for breakfast. So she had good proteins, she had good fats in there and she had her green, leafy green vegetables. She met fat salad and her body was able to get healthier. She made herself uh, uh, sufficient and non-toxic and that's what changed everything for her. Um, so let's go to the next one right here. Good fat choices, same thing. Look, you know, I, I put a whole list in there. Um, we, and if you guys have questions on where to, you know, uh, uh, about them, but I do want to say one thing right here is, you know, that if I've gotten anything or if we've talked to anything, avoid any hydrogenated, anything that says hydrogenated yeah. or processed uh, fats there. And you're going to see them like soybean oil, vegetable oils, all the trans fat, anything I'm see trans fat. And by the way, if it doesn't say trans fat on there, it doesn't mean that there's no trans fat in there. It just means that you have to have a they just lower the serving size. Have you ever wonder why the bags of chips, potato chips got smaller? Yeah. Like you got those big salt and vinegar chips, right? Yeah. And, uh, but there's only like eight chips in that bag. It's yeah. because they had to lower the number of chips to lower the, keep, uh, keep the, keep the serving there. size there. All right. So, um, we'll, we, you'll have your list of good, healthy fats there. Um, but here's the other thing is that, you know, the easiest thing and like, uh, we just had our anniversary here, at, like I said, in the office. We had all kinds of vegetables here. My wife cut up a whole bunch of vegetables. So she just left town, um, and she left this big bag of vegetables. And in those vegetables, it, like, there was, like, carrots and all this. I've been eating vegetables like crazy, and I have been so full, and I, I can't even think about eating anything else. Uh, but we, we, Dr. Sherry and I were talking about how you know if it's a high-fiber uh, carbohydrate. Like, like, try eating it raw, right? You'll get an idea of how much fiber for sure. Yeah, like think about a Brussels sprout. Yep. Think about uh, a two by four. It's got a lot of fiber. Yeah, it does. It's hard so to eat that. It, it's the hard, the harder it is to eat it raw, the, the more fiber there is in there. And and just so you know, fiber, like for every gram of fiber that's in there, it binds a gram of carbohydrate. Yeah. So that's why, you know, you can eat, you know, 14 bowls of spinach to equal one bowl of oatmeal there. And, uh, and think about the nutrient density that's there. You know, one of the things, as a vegetarian, you'll get the, the question, the protein question all the time, and we're not talking about this time, but the, the vegetarian response to that or the vegan response is where do you get your fiber? Because most people who are very heavy meat eaters are not getting a lot of fiber, and it has a huge part in your cardiovascular system. So getting these vegetables in with a high fiber in them is absolutely important. And again, it dampers the, the sugar breakdown within them. So it's really important. Yeah, so once again, these lists are there. You guys have the, you have the notes there. The other thing is this, is so if we have the high fiber ones, then we have the high starchy food choices there. Yeah. Uh, and typically what we find is the high fiber ones are green and the starchy ones are gonna be pretty much white, right? right? Like, and so the, the, the whiter it is, the lighter it is, except for like cauliflower, um, you know, it, it's gonna raise our blood sugar. Yeah. The potato is the classic one in this, right? I mean, it's very starchy. Yeah, so, um, so we wanna make sure that, you know, that basically, you know, your, your rices and things like that. Those are the things that raise the blood sugar. On this one, by the way, if you guys want to get an idea of this, this is all the glycemic index. And that's a measurement of how quickly a food product will increase your blood sugar. And so the higher, you know, diabetics are always worried about ramping up that blood sugar, as we all should be. So glycemic index, you can type it in on the computer. You can type in whatever food you're interested in, and it'll give you a rating on what the glycemic index is on the food. So you wanna have the, the, the lower glycemic index so that these things break down slower so we don't get this massive push of sugar, which creates increased inflammation, increased fat, and we go down the road we go. So glycemic index, a really good thing to have on your phone, check on it on the web, look at your food items. You might be stunned at some of the products. How quick By the way, have you guys ever heard of a beer belly? It's one of the one of the highest things on the glycemic index is beer. So no wonder why people get a beer belly, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so, um, all right, so the next one that we're going to talk about is like their starchy food choices. Look, 
like you know, I, I know nobody's eating you know tapioca. I mean, maybe if somebody is eating tap tapioca, sure but is. it's like we look at the things like the grains. Most of those grains are going to be your starchy food choices that we really want to avoid. You know, literally, you'll see that the ones little the that have the uh, asterisks right there. Those are ancient grains. Those are so much better. And at least if you're going to eat grains, use things that are that are made of ancient grains. There, your body they have higher fiber. They're harder for your body to digest, so it doesn't raise the blood sugar there. There's there's also starchy carbohydrates like your sweet potatoes and your chickpeas and your and your, your different types of beans. So a lot of times people say, well, I'm going to you know have eat beans all the time. You know, those are actually starchy food choices. Yes, there's prior carbohydrates, but they'll raise your um your uh i mean there's yes there's protein but you'll raise your blood sugar with those also um what do you think dr sherry fruits now this is a, this is a big one uh, this is a, 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 you want to take fruits there yeah i mean fruits are there the, again the glycemic index is important on fruits uh there's some fruits that you you can look at some of these things and say they're really healthy but some of the fruit, the index is really high on them. So you want to be careful. Uh, the number one thing I look at is organic on these, especially with we talked about the dirty dozen. Uh, you know, I love strawberries, but boy, you got to make sure you get the organic ones on that. Um, go ahead. You can keep moving on. Yeah. So I think that, I think the main thing on the, on the fruits is this is a lot of times people, the first question I get is, but aren't fruits healthy? Are you telling me not to eat fruit? Yeah. And like, we have to go back to our ancestors, right? So right now I have a blackberry bush in my black yard. I get like maybe a, a bucket of blackberries, you know, like about this big from this whole bush one time a year. I don't get to go to the grocery, you know, like my ancestors never got to go to the grocery store and get, you know, you know, they didn't have like get a, a, a dozen apples every week there. They didn't buy watermelons all year round. Just because it's it's healthy doesn't mean it's good for us all the time there. Yeah. Remember, we're addicted to sugar, so we can rationalize anything. So real quick, that, there's a there's a thing that happens with sugars. It's called glycation. When a sugar comes in, it'll lock onto a protein in our body. This is a big thing for aging. Sugars will grab onto proteins and it destroys the protein. The, the equivalent of like toasting a piece of bread. And, and in the science world, they talk about when it, when a protein becomes glycated by a sugar, it can't ever be, you can't untoast the bread. And as these proteins get glycated, our bodies break down internally and externally. We start getting wrinkled. And it turns out the number one sugar by far that glycates proteins in our body is fructose. It's super important. And by the way, fructose turns into what? High fructose corn syrup, syrup right? And, and, then, and actually, I was just reading an article that was talking about, you know, they're seeing all this uh, cirrhosis of the liver. Yeah. And it's because of the uh, so much of the high fructose, not just the corn syrup, but the high fruits that we're eating right now, yeah. too. Yeah, and that's why you want to be careful which fruits you get, because fructose, we're, we're drawn to it. Our body will break it down into glucose very easily. But if you don't have the right, if you're eating these fruits with the high or any of these foods with the high fructose and the syrups and the sodas of the high fructose corn syrup, that fructose goes right in, binds up to the proteins, and lactates them, and ruins them. It ruins our vision. It wrinkles our skin. It ruins our insides. So we want to. It's okay to have the sugars, but we want to make sure we don't get the ones that are super high on the glycemic thing. And it's not that you can't have them, but you want to limit those and lean towards the other ones. Like the green apples are great on that scale. Yeah, remember they used to have those diets. It was like you know, like eat the fruit diet, right? Yeah. Uh, I didn't work. Like, I mean, it tastes good. You become a sugar addict and that leaves, uh, you know, tiramisu. Yeah. It's so, all about which ones you eat. On that. So make sure um, you just like your berries are best, the best place to go to. Um, so as far as like, you know, our fruit choices, you know, moderation fruits like cherries and melons and all those different types of things. We have our, you know, I typically tell people just eat what's in season. But, you know, we talked about you want to have 35 grams of carbohydrate. A cup of bananas has 30, 30 grams of carbohydrate. Okay, a cup of banana, like almost your whole daily exactly. carbohydrate, um, while a, like a cup of um, uh, like bl uh, blueberries has 16 grams of carbohydrate, but nine grams of nine grams of fiber. So you can literally only get five grams of carbohydrate, almost like seven, you know, like six times more cups of blueberries than you can have for one banana. One thing I look whenever I think of nutrition and diet, I think of go back thousands of thousands of years ago, and what did the human being eat? How did it function? And one of the things that you want to do is make sure you're eating a wide range. You know, human beings didn't have huge farms thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. We ate what we found and we ate seasonal things. In other words, strawberries would come into season for a brief amount of time and then they would disappear and we wouldn't eat them year round. So be very careful. These products, these foods were eaten during the season and that was it. Nowadays, we're allowed to have strawberries nonstop because they're all the time. So it makes a lot of sense to me that we, we evolved on this planet 
add eating different foods during different times and mixing them up. This goes for salads as well. If you're eating the salad every night, that's great. But if it's the same two lettuces every time, you've got to mix it up. you got to have different ones in there. Yeah. So just do what your mom said. Eat your vegetables, right? I mean, like if you were to make one, like, like, a, like a simple change or an add-in, um, you know, in your learning, just add more vegetables in there. Um, if you're, if, um, as, as far as if you, if you don't have that access to vegetables or the green, green quality, you know, good quality, just drink your green vibrance. We have it here in the office there. Um, but really, like you said, you know, planning ahead is the key to discipline there and eating lots of variety is the key to conquering boredom there. Make it fun to try to figure things out. Like we actually have like a, a whole bunch of little containers that we, we put different vegetables in at the beginning of the week. So I come home at lunch and I just reach in the fridge and I have all these little things just pour like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I have some nuts that I pour in there. I have these big, massive salads that are almost so big that I can't eat. Um, and, and I think it makes it fun because I, you know, a lot of times we're like, I'm going to eat the same thing. And that's when we quit, right? Like we just get bored with something. We yeah. want to get stimulated there. I think, you know, in the beginning we talked about giving tools and, and, and creating habits and being motivated. And one of the things that I think is super important is how you approach these things. I have my, my college roommate called me not too long ago and he said, all right, I get it. You're not crazy. I'm becoming a vegetarian. And how do I do it? And I said, the first thing is, it's how you approach a dietary change. If you approach it as, oh my God, this is horrible. Dr. Osborne, Dr. Sherry are changing my diet. This is going to be super hard and I can't do it. You probably have already lost. If you approach it, the people I've seen who are the most successful with dietary challenges and things like this are the ones who approach it with, well, this is going to be really fun. I'm going to experiment with the recipes I have. I might change a few. I'm going to look at these other recipes. I'm going to go shopping for new products. If you approach it in that way, you're much more likely to be successful than if you go at it thing. Oh my gosh. And that's why the word diet is so bad, right? Like we were all taught, Oh, if you're on a diet, first of all, it's short term. And then you'll go back to eating how you used to eat. Don't think of this as a diet. This is a lifestyle change. You're going to start eating. Yeah, we, we all have a lifestyle right now. Right. Yep. And you just got to look at it. Do you like the lifestyle that I give you? Do you like the energy? And so that's really what the, the, when we put together the plans, the challenges, like there, there, it's a, it's a plan. It's a plan for a living. It's a, you're, you're planning for the type of life that you want to have. So we really have three different challenges and we broke this down on the link that you'll get there. We got the basic core challenge, the basic core plan. It's you make the three changes towards maximizing your life, right? So if you're not doing it, you have to do it. If your kids aren't doing it, they have to do it. Like the, like this is not that something that you decide, Hey, I'll try this. Like, this is like the minimal subsistence, right? Yeah. Like if you're like, if, if you're in school, like it's the difference. Like it's not that you're going from like a B to an A when you do this, you're going from like an F yeah. to a D. Does that make sense? A D C, right? It's, it's like, like it's, it's the basics, like just the past. This is what we should be doing. And like most people are like, well, that's radical. No, like what's radical is my wife was just sitting there with my father-in-law and she was watching all these people walk in, the in hospital, out of the right? hospital. Right. And she was like, she said it was, horrific to watch these people walking in and out and they just look like zombies going in wheelchairs and pieces and missing that is radical yeah. that people would think that that's normal so yeah. that's our basic core plan there yeah i mean i think when you look at the american diet and you see what we eat and people become oh that's what we all eat that's the popular diet when you go into the grocery store and look i mean the number of unhealthy food products are by far the majority, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And the number on food products in the grocery store that have added sugar is something crazy like 80%. I mean, yeah. it is just nuts when you look at what the Americans are eating. But it shouldn't surprise us because if you look at the obesity problem, you look at the cancer issues, you look at the cardiovascular disease, we're eating the food products that lead to that. And if that's how you want to go, then you stay that course. But if it's not how you want to go, you have to change and you have to change now. And that's what getting the motivation is and following through on these programs asking us more questions on how to change those habits and break some of those addictions. Number one challenge is going to be the addictions. You're going to have to break those addictions. And I didn't, I don't know if I mentioned the food selection book, but that's a great book to be checking out. I think I mentioned it earlier. All right. So the basic, the basic core challenge. So look, if you've been with us for a while, you've been working on your diet, you got your basic three handled there. You got your routines down there. What we have is the, the, the intermediate challenge. And so literally it's for people that are like, Hey, look, I I'm, I'm doing good. I just want more. Like I want to feel better. I want to feel stronger. I, you know, I, there's some more weight loss that I want to achieve there. I really just want to get my my brain and my my body back there. And then look, the the other the last one is this is the advanced healing uh, challenge there. And, and I think this is you know this is not a place that you live. 
you can you can spend a lot of time in here. You don't have to live there. Nobody's going to live on a ketogenic plan for the rest of their life. But the key is this: is that it's it's like to reduce cellular information. It's about regaining our health there. And so, I think that a lot of times people get confused. They're like, okay, the advanced plan, basic plan, like you know, what, what do we do there? And really, like I said, it's it's really about one. The the difference between those two is uh, is really about one thing, and that's really about if you have health issues. If you have health issues, um, and we'll go over those five the, the five things there. But if you have those five things, you got to make sure that uh, um, that you're on the, the on the advanced plan there. Um, for the most part, I, I personally use the intermediate diet about fifty to seventy five percent. But like if you got the five factors that put you, uh, you need to be on, that we'll talk about in a second. Yeah. You need to be on there with the, the advanced healing plan. Um, so your healing plan until it's resolved there. So most of our most of our People in the office are on the intermediate plan there, um, and they stay there for the rest of their lives. Uh, but they can have some diet variation, good up and down, and, and you know uh, that's a good place to be there. So here's what the intermediate plan looks like. Okay, it's actually really simple. So if you're if you're already doing the uh, um, the, the the basic plan, that's a good starting place. So that's why we have the basic plan right here. Um, but then what we're looking at is we're looking at you know only having low glycemic index fruits. Really, I mean, it doesn't mean that you can't have like, you know, like watermelon in the 4th of July, but like we're talking about how you live, not the exceptions to the rule. You know, the, the hardest thing is for me when people are like, can I never? No, you can do whatever you want to do, but it's, it's, the, it's, it's, the, it's what you do on a regular basis, not on the yeah. exception. And it, again, it goes back to what I was saying. When you look at that and you look at those lists, because we have those in there, and you look at those fruits and those vegetables are on the list, the things you're going to add. Sometimes you'll go, oh my gosh, that fruit's not on there. I love it. Then change that. Look at your, you know, your fruit salad or whatever you make and modify it. There's plenty of really good foods there to have. You are not lacking on great things to get on this plan. You just have to All right, this is uh, this is Dr. Osborne. We're back there. Sorry about that. For some reason, we uh, had a temporary uh, challenge there. Um, we live in the Silicon Valley. We seem to have internet drops. So um, let's get back to. Let me just pull us up here for a second. We got our slides. We got our files. We got our settings here, Dr. Sherry. We're you know, working people it out. Hopefully. Well, oh, let's turn the video on there. Okay, good. There we go. So we're back. Everything is good. Save the day. Um, so basically, what I wanted to make sure is that you know we we know that any country that you know society that has more than twenty percent of its calories from grains has a little, tremendous amount of degenerative diseases there. Um, and so um, w there's a lot more in my notes on this. But basically, what we want to make sure is that you know we're we're making optimal uh, choices um, as far as our grains. We want to make sure. Uh, lesser amounts of, of like rice and brown things, anything that's going to raise the blood sugar there. You have to go organic during this phase there. 
And, uh, and one of the things that we found is that like, if you are going to do certain things with different grains, soaking up sprouted grains is going to be a, a massive, uh, a massively important thing. So as far as the advanced he he cellular healing challenge plan. So there's, there's, there's mapped out things. The difference between this and the, the um, is that we're going to increase our fats. We're going to have to get our calories from somewhere. But this is how we heal. So the first thing is you got to know if it's right for you. We'll go over the five things in a second. We got to increase our fats there. And there's you got to understand what the objective is. Like we just don't do something because it seems like a good idea. This is about helping your body heal. So if you got health issues, if you have like this is about regenerating cells and regenerating your body right now. Um, so the first, the first of our goals, the three things that we're going to be really working on, and I don't, it, like, I don't know if you wanted to take this one, you want me to? You go ahead, keep going. You're okay. Going. Oh wow, I'm on a roll. So we're going to talk about inflammation, and literally, like Dr. Sherry talked about, inflammation they talk about is literally the number one killer in America. Our inflammatory lifestyle that we have is the number one uh, killer in America, and, and it, what it does is it causes degeneration of the the walls of our arteries. It causes decreased blood flow there. Um, and so that, that one of our number one goals is to reduce the inflammation so your organs can get the, the, the blood flow that they want so that your hormones and your cells will start to regulate because uh, you and that will definitely have an impact on the, the stability uh, on your uh, on how you express health. yeah when you guys when you look at these problems as we go through the inflammation and the detoxification I want to introduce that 80 20 rule which is when people start looking at diet and health the 80 20 rule basically says it's 80 percent diet it's 20% exercise. And that one really flipped because my undergrad is in exercise physiology. We did a lot of work on exercise. And in those days, I just figured if you exercise, you'd be healthy. I just exercised a lot. You know, the old days where you exercise, you can eat whatever you want. Well, that's not true. It turns out what you're putting in your body, what's assimilating and turning into is creating inflammatory environments, which are creating chronic diseases down the road. 80% diet, 20%. You got to be moving on these two guys. As a side note, we're not talking about it, but you got to be out exercising. Yeah. So next one is detoxification. So the first one, the first goal, the this, the uh, advanced cellular healing diet is, uh, or the plan, or the challenge is, is inflammation. The second one is detoxification. Look, because the goal is to heal the cells. You are only as healthy as your cells are. So if your cells are damaged, there is no way that they're going to heal. Your body's going to be able to heal, repair, and regenerate there. So we talked about fats. The, you know, they damage the cell membrane. The cell membrane literally is that gatekeeper. It's the thing that allows that nutrients to get in and the toxins to get out. And literally the standard American diet is literally toxic. It's a, a and it's nutrient deficient there. And that no wonder why cells become sick. And it's, it's not that we care about one cell, but it's one cell becomes two cells, it becomes 10 cells there. Um, and, and this is really, you know, a lot of this is, um, you know, the toxicity is an issue because um, if we don't have healthy cells, we don't have to have the healthy nutrients and the cell walls are inflamed uh, we're not going to be able to get the nutrients into there. Third thing is, is hormone re regulation. And I, th I really think this is kind of an, a, an important thing when we're talking about, you know, we talked about things like insulin. We talked about things like leptin, your fat burning hormone. Like it's about controlling cellular information. You know, you get these inflammatory things like the cytokines, but it's about removing the toxins, which will allow your hormone receptors to actually function right. So many of our problems, I mean, we have like 40 different hormones. You change one hormone, you change all of them. Yeah, they're there. very, very powerful. And we're in a, in a world right now that we live in hormonal dysregulation, and people are like, well, what's the one thing that I take? And I, I say, don't start taking things. Stop taking things. Stop eating Stop eating the things that are causing the problems there. So our goal is we want to fix the inflammation. We want to fix the detoxification yeah. and clear out those detoxification processes. Um, and we want to actually help you start developing a hormonal, uh, like a hormonal balance there. Okay. So. These are five things, right? Yep, the five things that we want to look at. High triglycerides and cholesterol levels. Those are the cardiovascular signals, and this is the five factors that say, do you want to be on the advanced diet? These are the things that we need help. If you're having high blood pressure, we got to get you on this right away. If you have an elevated glucose, you're looking at diabetes issues, insulin, leptin created. These are the things that we want to drive there. If you're having neurotoxicity issues, you can talk a little about that as well. Or if you find yourself saying, as you're listening to this, you think, oh, I've tried all this and I can't lose weight. We're going to have to shock the system and get you back. we got to find your habits too. But this diet's designed for specifically for those things. When you look at that list, if you're up there, if you're dealing with a health issue, there's a cancer issue going on, cardiovascular issue, this is the diet that we want you to jump on and kind of shock the system and get back going. We don't have a lot of time to play around anymore.
Yeah. So, I mean, I, the big problem is, is that, you know, you go to your doctor and you're like, he's, he says you have high triglycerides. You're like, oh, what pill do I take for that? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the problem is, is that, you know, every one of these things, if if you don't address the cause of the cure. So if you have high cholesterol and you take a high cholesterol pill, then you get dementia and you get, yeah, you know, all, like all the different issues. You take your high blood pressure. Now you don't, your organs don't get the oxygen and the nutrients that they need. Mm -hmm. Right. High blood pressure is not a condition. It's a symptom. Right. These are all addressing the symptoms of ill health. You know, your blood sugar, you don't have diabetes. You have a, a, like a, a blood sugar issue caused by the way that you eat and the way that you live. And neurotoxicity is a big one. And I think this is a, um, a, you know, a lot of times we don't realize the brain fog that we have, the difficulty thinking. And, and what I find is most like weight loss resistant issues, because I could, if people are like, Dr. Osborne, I've been exercising. I've been eating all the right foods. I've been doing everything that you're telling me. And when, you know, I just can't lose weight. Well, many times in these people, you know, people are like been taking medications for years. They're toxic. They've been living in toxic environments. And those toxins literally burn out the receptors, those leptin receptors in your brain that tell your um, brain how to do. So that's one of the things if you're, if you have questions on it, you know, I, we always talk about daily detox. Yeah. It's a big thing that, that if you've been having weight loss resistance, it's a good thing to actually use the detox system to be able to, in this process there, and especially if you have lots of like, extra fat, um, as your body starts to lose fat, those toxins come out of the cells as they come out of the cells. If you don't have something to bind it up, it's gonna go back up there. Uh, Dr. Sherry and I were kind of playing with this. There's something called the visual contrast sensitivity test. Uh, I'll put a link on that on the on, uh, later on this. And it's like 15 bucks, you can take the test. It'll actually let you know how toxic your brain is there just by looking at there. Um, but literally, and also weight loss resistance. Like, we want to lose weight. It's not about losing weight, looking good in a bikini. It's actually about being healthy there. So what does this look like? So I'll take top three, you take the bottom two. Got it. So basically the, the, it comes down to this. We already talked ad nauseum about no sugar, right? You know, and, and really, and, and, I, and I mean sugar and artificial sweeteners, like anything that's, because it's going to trick your brain. It's going to, it's going to make you weaker. So if you're eating all these artificial sweeteners, not only are there neurotoxins, which are going to interfere with your body being able to lose weight, but the neurotoxins, the, you know, the artificial sweeteners, they damage our brain, they're carcinogenic. And so they're, they're, they're really going to mess with us there. You know, no grains, like, and this is not, well, what about whole wheat? No, no, no grains during this time. Uh, we got this is we got to get back on track. We got to get ourselves healthy there. Uh, and yes, that means no oatmeal. That's the one question I get. Well, my doctor said oatmeal is healthy. Not, and I say, look, you're a diabetic and you have heart disease and you have high cholesterol and you have all these issues. So no, it's not healthy for you because it's raising your blood sugar levels. It's creating other problems. And we got to up our fat really for the first two to three weeks after beginning the program. And this is a time where we, it's really about detoxification. We, we have to turn you from being a sugar burner to a fat burner. So if you've been a sugar burner for a long time, like that's your primary source, you know, you drink a lot of sodas, you've been, you know, like eating a lot of carbs, you're gonna have to recalibrate your body there to actually burn efficiently there. And so the bottom two on this, uh, really have to do with if you're weight loss resistant. And one thing we're going to do is drop a lot of fruits out. We're going to try to drop that sugar load down. So we're going to be only in berries. Some, you'll see on the list a very select group of berries that you'll have. We're going to try to drop down the fructose level for you to try to drop the sugars again. Uh, and the other thing is the protein, the protein intake is important. We're looking, as you can see on there, uh, the average of about 15 to, uh, the average intake is like, what does it say, 15, 15 to 259 per meal. Yeah. Uh, that's This is not a high protein diet, by the way. That's not the goal. It's not the Atkins diet. That's no. what happened to Dr. Atkins. He died. Yep. You, you add a lot of protein, you're going to become very acidic. So the level of protein is very important for us, but we want to make sure we're getting in the fats, the proteins, and trying to drop down those berries. If you're resistant to losing weight, you're going to shock that system back and get it going. Yeah. We're not talking eating Fred Flintstone sticks, like the deck of cards. Yeah. You know, like, a, like a, if we're talking like for a female – you know, like the maximum amount of protein should be about 15 grams. That's not the that's not the minimum, by the way. That's the maximum amount of protein per meal. And now, if you're like a like a like an athlete, or you know, like you're doing Ironmans, we'll have a different conversation. But for the average person, you know, we're talking about seven grams of protein, uh, like for an egg, right? Okay. So two stop checks. This is a big thing that we've run into over you know the years on this is that if somebody's not losing weight with everything we talked about, because it's literally somebody's like, well, Dr. Osborne, it's not working for me. It always works. That's the big thing you have to understand. If you follow the rules that we've given you, it always works every single I've never seen a time that it doesn't work. The only time that it doesn't work if somebody's eating too much protein, 
um, or they're just so toxic that we have to drill, deal with issues of toxicity and then it's toxicity over time. Like it's gonna take time to detox you so you become actually like uh, non-neurotoxic so that you, you reset those receptors there. But I think that the third reason is, is that people just aren't honest with themselves. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the biggest problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I'm doing everything that I should be doing, right? Um, you know. And, and you, you'll get those people, by the way, who the discipline becomes a big deal, right? It becomes, I'm gonna do the diet and then well, I'll do it, but I'll let this happen, and I'll do it, but I'll have this, and that. Those are those little, you know, sneak tricks are where your brain tricks you, and next thing you know, you're not on the diet, and then you're like, it didn't work. Well, it it works. You didn't, and so I want you to be on this diet as strict as you can. Have fun with it, and lay it out, and prep for it, and let's get started. Yeah. We're going to be talking about the four weeks as we go through these processes. There's going to be videos every week from the different docs. There's four of us here. Um, each one will be putting out a video on a Monday, and then every day of the week we'll have out other videos talking about challenges to do within the next four weeks as we go through the challenge. Yeah, and I think this is one of the things is that our brains love something new. And so um, as we're going through this process, you know, when you when you click on the the, the District Hyrule Tribe page, we want to be able to interact with you. We want to be able to ask answer your questions. So Dr. Sherry, I'll be uh, I'll be on there. Dr. Doss will be on there. Um, you know, Alyssa will be on there, Doc, um, um, Dr. Osborne. Yeah, Dr. Osborne, myself, and Bryce will be on there. We'll be answering your questions there. But the main thing is that one of our goals is, is that we want to expose you to new ideas. So each of us has taken a week. Do you have that, that flyer there, Dr. Sherry? Oh, yeah. So the, the flyer looks like this. You've probably seen it around the office. But basically, first week, you know, we're going to be looking at the Beach Body Killer, right? Okay, you, you don't have to want a beach body, but it's just something fun. So each day we're going to have a small little challenge that you can do. Something, it's not a big thing. It's not like go run 20 miles today, right? It's a small little thing that you can do to learn things that you can do to incorporate your life to be kind of build build there. We're going to talk about stress and weight. Uh, we're going to have a whole week on stress and weight, some things, stress killers that you can do to stimulate your, your, your weight there. We're going to be talking about you don't have enough time to exercise. Like how can you get exercise in the day, even if you don't like to exercise, things that you can do there. And obviously, you know, there's there's actually studies out there talking about how chiropractic can help you lose weight, right? But more importantly, I, I don't care about you losing weight. I care about you being healthy. That's the end point there. So that's yeah. really what it comes down to. Hey, guys, the reason we're doing the, the, the videos throughout the week is to try to help with the motivation. Remember, we started by saying it's how you use the tools to get what we're after, right? We give you a lot of information about how you do it. The whole plan between these little videos are we just want to keep you in touch. We want to give you fun challenges to do. Keep going back, listening to the videos, watching things, stay in touch and stay on top of it. Staying educated on the process really motivates you. Reading a couple of the books I talked about, diving in, watching YouTube videos on health. you got to be involved. It can't be just done haphazardly. You have to jump in and be on top of this. And we're going to be reaching out with these videos so that you can stay in touch with us as well. All right, so we're going to, uh, last couple tips there. Look, if I haven't said it enough, we haven't said enough, yeah, eliminating sugar is, sugar is critical, okay? So we put all this in there. You should have the link to the file there. If you don't put, you know, like you'll, it'll, we'll make sure that it gets on to the landing page. So just check back out, check your email. Second thing is, is that, you know, when we're talking about grains, like, it, like it's not just some grains, like just it's, start becoming a student of grains and understanding the damaging effects there. But, you know, stop, you know, stop the grains until you get the results that you want there. And then the third thing is this is like, we got to, we got to fix our hormones, right? Your cells can only, um, you know, use two things for energy, fat or sugar. You make the choice. Fat makes fat will actually regulate your hormones. It will give you a longer, healthier life. Sugar will actually destroy your body um, and uh, create all the health problems that your current family and friends have that are living that lifestyle there. So what we did is, you know, and, and when you see Alyssa, just make sure that you, um, um, that you thank her. Um, she put a lot of time and effort into putting the resources. Yeah, I just uh, congratulate her. But you get a link. You'll download the resources there. We broke it down into, you know, step one is, you know, choose your challenge, right? Yep. You got to pick which one of the three that you want to do. You know, there's another thing I want to touch before we close. There are a lot of people who are listening to this and you thought of other friends and family and you thought they should be on this too. They need this maybe more than you do. And we want those people to be in this office where we can help them. This environment is designed to feed you and be healthy. The chiropractic office is all about natural health, nutrition, keeping you adjusted, keeping you exercised. We've had a rash of new patients in the last week and two or three of them came in and I said, why are you here? And they said, because my friend is getting healthy and I want what she has. I want those people that you're thinking about to get in here because we got that's our, we went to school to help people be healthy, but we need help 
from you to get those people in. It also helps you dramatically to have your friends and family be on this plan with you because it's always nice to create your little warrior group to move forward. So get your friends and family who want to be on that, tag them in, let's get them connected and have them work. It's easier when there's a bunch of people heading in one direction than it is to be trying to lead your own path. So get that group together. Yeah, you can just email us at info at drtjosborne.com. Um, and if like if we're going to be doing a, uh, a, 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 a we're going to send out we send out the link for it because we're going to replay this webinar and give them an opportunity to see, hear the same information that you guys heard tonight. We'll also replay, we'll, we'll put a link to the other webinar that we did the other night. So the first goal for you guys: number one, choose your challenge. Uh, number two, uh, download your resources there. Number three, join the Discover Health Tribe. Um, and you know there's a link on there. You just click on the link and it'll it'll, it'll auto join you. It's a private page. It'll come up there. Uh, that's where and that's gonna, where all the videos will be. That's where all the videos are going to be. It's not going to be on the discovery page. We're not putting it anywhere else. We want to be able to have this as an intimate setting to be able to communicate with you. And as a as a thank you to everybody that's on there, we actually put a certificate on there. It's you know a lot of times people ask me how do I get my family, how do I get my friends. Look, we have five essentials in our office. We have mindset. We have nutrition. We have uh, exercise. We have uh, talk, you know removes toxins there. But look, you can go you know, like weeks without eating, right? You can go day, a lifetime without exercising, right? You can go decades with being toxic. You can go, you know, minutes without breathing, right? But like, you know, but you can't go a single second with a properly functioning nervous system. And so that's why we put that uh, gift certificate. It's actually, we never do this, but it's at, it's like literally it's a $240 gift certificate and it expires July 6th. And we only have about 15 spots there. So uh, not about, it's exactly 15 because we just don't, we, we left those openings. So it's first come, first serve if, uh, um, if, we don't, if they don't get in in time. So just know that uh, we're here to serve you. We're here to save you and we're here to help you. But we need to, our job also is to raise up future leaders. So if you can teach it, you can do it. And so start you know, speaking this to other people, start speaking it to your kids and families and friends there. And be all means ask questions when you guys are coming in. We're here to help you. We're going to push this next four weeks. So it's going to be great. We expect to hear great stories from you guys as you take this information and move forward. All right. Have a great night, guys. Right, good night, and guys. Blessings.